Hello everybody, Paul here from Ortho Eval Pal. Today I want to talk to you about evaluating a leg length discrepancy and my favorite way of doing it. Now I know we've all studied this in school where you take a tape measure and you find the ASIS, you put the end of that tape measure on that spot, you bring it down and you go to the medial malleoli. Well first of all, trying to get to the ASIS is kind of like doing the edge of a goniometer. It's not a very perfect sharp spot to put your finger on it, okay? So it's kind of hard to isolate exactly what part of that you're doing consistently with the other side, okay? Same thing with the malleolus. It's rounded on the end. It's not very sharp, so you can't isolate that one spot, all right? So it makes it difficult to get that perfect measurement this way. Now, if you use the belly button, belly button's about the size of a dime, okay? And so you've got some, some play there where you can make a mistake in regards to your um, measurement. The other thing you need to remember is that if somebody has a leg length discrepancy, it doesn't matter if they're laying down on their back or not, all right? It's, it depends on what happens when you're standing. That's when you function better, uh, and that's when you try to level out your pelvis. So the way I like to do this, Felicia, if I could have you stand, please. I'm going to have you face me. So what I like to do is take a look at the hip height in this position. So I usually go to the iliac crest and I, I kind of ballpark it, okay, to see if there's a leg length discrepancy. Now she doesn't have one, but if she did, let's say that her um, left side was higher than her right side. What I then do is take these different pieces of plexiglass um, at a quarter inch a piece, and if I need a bigger one, because some people have a real big leg length discrepancy, and I'll use them individually like this. And then I recheck them. Not only do I recheck them to see if they're level, but I ask them how they feel in this position, if they feel like they're being thrown off to one side or not. When they feel comfortable, then I take that measurement, let's say it's only one of these, which is a quarter of an inch, I'll then take a lift which will consume three quarters of the inside of the shoe and put that same amount of lift inside the shoe. I'm not a big advocate of just doing a heel lift because what that'll do is that will lift the heel up and make the knee flex more and put more pressure on the metatarsals. So it really throws the mechanics off a little bit. I like to really get about three quarters of the foot involved. Um, that's much more functional. The patient usually does a lot better with that. If it's a really large uh, amount, like three eighths of an inch, I might start with an eighth of an inch for a week and then go to um, a quarter after that and then you know build it up so that it gets up to that amount. I'll never put more than three eighths of an inch inside a shoe because they, they would feel like they're gonna pop out of their shoe and it usually takes up a little too much space. So anything larger than that, we talk to a cobbler about lifting the sole of the shoe to help get them to a better um, position. So it's important that we check them in this functional position, get them lined up with a longer um, lift inside the shoe. So if you have any questions, um, please get in touch with me at orthoevalpal.com and um, please make sure that you uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Thanks.